There's a very beautiful quotation that I heard many years ago. It has a uh, very universal understanding. It says, as long as there is love left, then there is something to build upon. I bring that up because that is where we are in the black community in terms of we as black men and you as black women. In my previous video, I have pointed out, and I believe it is a fact, and if many of you would self-analyze yourselves and go inside and be totally honest with yourselves, there is still love present inside of us in spite of our disappointments, our hurt, our disappointments is what is preventing us from healing to the degree where we can come back together as a community. What is very tricky about hurt, pain, disappointment is that because of what transpired in the past in terms of memory and how much it made you feel on the inside, what comes along with that when the idea of what they call forgiveness, resolve, or moving forward, what comes in opposition to that is a deceptive intelligence that comes with it to, to justify us holding on to what transpired, which means that we are made to feel intellectually justified in maintaining our positions of having anim animosity towards one another. I hope that I explained that right. So, when a whole lot of panels are up and a lot of our black men and black women are trying to figure this thing out about not only what's going on with black men, but now there's a whole lot of panels that's going up and we're trying to, trying to understand what's really happening with our black women. And what we are gonna to have to remember and understand is our culture was cultivated by way of the irresponsibility of a lot of our elders before us. When the 70s, the mid 70s came into place and the elders, you might as well say, started doing drugs and going to the clubs and the disco era came in and everybody start um, compromising their moral principles. And so when parents compromise their moral principles, when they have children, that means that the children are gonna suffer. So a lot of us was raised up by our grandmothers and our great grandmothers. I was raised up by my great grandmother. which means that the parents had compromised their love towards their children. And so the children were left with the grandparents who still had enough love inside to look after the baby, she might as well say. So when all of that started transpiring, I would say the last generation that at least had a chance of um, being successful based upon um, principle, productive principles and self-integrity were the children who were raised by their grandparents and their great-grandparents and they went forth and 
they became successful. But what happened was that the majority of the people who didn't have the option or the privilege of having grandmothers and great grandmothers, those were the ones who fell by the wayside out here in this wicked society. And they became subjects of the effects of that society. They became drug dealers, they became thugs, they became um, gang members, you know, who looked upon their peers as family. And that's what happened. And not only with black men, but with black women as well, in what, what whatever areas. And so that is what produced this condition right now. So the children who came out of those parents, I'm talking about the early 80s and going into the early 90s, those parents, the children that came out of those parents is what you're looking at right now. And this is one of the primary reasons why our community is in the shape that it's in right now. The quotation had said, as long as there is love present, then you have something to build upon. So it's basically saying the root has to be love, the root. And root and, and, and love has to germinate so that it can take root, so that it can grow and bloom and be productive and be successful. That is not a manifestation right now in terms of what's going on in our community. And so we spent a lot of time hurting one another and this is what we're dealing with right now. The effects of disappointment, the, the effects of hurt, the effects of slander, because of a whole lot of the um, podcasts right now to what we have a whole lot of dis uh, people discussing what I'm discussing right now. What I'm starting to notice is that not enough of these panels are focusing on the solution that's gonna lead to redeeming our people. We're just going back and forth Black men and black women are going back and forth and we're just beating beating each other up because of our um, ruptured personalities and our um, discord in which filtered down to our personalities and have created a, a race of people that are self-destructive and immoral. And so going back and forth and all of these debates the reason why nothing comes out of them is because there's no love. It's not rooted in love. I mean, we even have these brothers who have fallen victim to this whole simp theology. Now, if you still a man as myself, who is, who is considered a gentleman, who holds doors and who pulls out chairs and who's not afraid to express how he feel about black women, you are considered a simp. And so we spend a whole lot of times giving these um, false titles to one another. And so now a whole lot of black men are walking around right now. I would do thus and so, but I don't want to be looked upon as a simp. Well, what you have to do is not give a damn about how people see you. Don't let these people rule you. These, these brothers rule you. Because if you watch those brothers long enough, like five or 10, ten um, years down the line, they're still gonna be talking that same bullshit and they're still gonna be um, single and unhappy and bitter and going back and forth and, and disclaiming any black man that's trying to be, that who is not ashamed of, of being himself so when it comes to black women of this generation, finding black men who wouldn't mind expressing himself like that, they put a barrier up, which is the simp theology, to where that barrier is blocking black women 
from actually coming in contact with these men because these men are torn down and talked down by their fellow black men to the degree that these black men who are gentlemen feel awkward even being themselves. So that's working against us. And so on the black women, it's um I don't I don't I don't know what they call it, but when a whole lot of black women want to say I love black men and and I honor black men, and, you know, you have black women talking against them, talking them down. And so on this side of black men, we're not able to come in contact with these black women because upon the side of black women, when these black women try to move towards us and when they want to really try to love us, they feel uncomfortable of expressing that love and honor towards black men because the black women are tearing them down. And so you have this simple theology and you got this strong and, uh, strong and independent bullshit going on with, with the black women. And it's keeping good black men from black women, good black women, and good black women from good black men. So with all of these panels discussing, nothing comes out of that productive because at the end of these, these discussions, the problem is still even more stronger because no one has come up with a solution that's gonna eventually heal the community upon both sides to where we can actually come to a redemption to where we can come together as a community of black men and black women, heal, redeem ourselves and move forward. So what's keep preventing us from doing that is that we have become blinded by our disappointment in one another. We're so disappointed in one another and it's so strong. It's because the root of our complaints and the root of our grievances, there's a strong love that none of us want to admit. Get rid of the something, get rid of the strong and independent theology and be honest. Be honest, if you love black men, love us honestly. Black man, if you love that black woman, love her honestly and don't care what these, these um, fellow black men call you, don't care. And on the black woman, don't care about what your sisters are gonna call you and how they're gonna look at you, that's not important. It is love that is important. Now Pete may say, I don't like that word love. Well, love has had a bad rap, and you can blame us for that. You can blame us even for that. But the whole thing is, it's still present. It's still present in all of us, and we're blinded by our disappointment in one another, and that's just the way it is. So what are we gonna do? Are we gonna have discussions that are objective, to where when we pull away from the screen after watching all of these podcasts, whether they're both male and female together or all females talking or all men talking, at the end of all of those beautiful discussions and insightful discussions, let's end those discussions with a, with a plan to where it's going to give the, the black community hope of healing and redemption that we may move forward because that's what we need. We need to break ourselves out of this, this daily conflict that's going on in all of us on these panels, you know, on the streets. Because even out here in Las Vegas, it just seems like the black women are always angry about something, always angry. And these black men, they always got some deception going. It is always some deception going on. 
to the degree when when a black man man can ask you a question, it ain't nothing but some bullshit coming. That's all it is. That has to end. So we need healing on both sides. We need healing on both sides and therefore we can't point the finger at the black woman without pointing it at ourselves. And the black women can uh, point their finger at black men without pointing it to themselves. And that's just the way it is. We have to get rid of this deceptive intelligence that comes and rationalizes and, and so-called justifies our current position while our current position is against one another. We have to end that. We have to end that. I'm going to um, cut this, this first one short because um, I have a lot of things to do tonight. And um, I'm basically exhausted from my um, work week. But tomorrow, things will be much better because I would have gotten the rest that I need. I tried to, I was trying to make up my mind if I wanted to um, do this first one tonight, but I think that I've put enough out there um, in order to build on the next video a little bit more um, objectively. So um, with that being said, I greet everybody a good night and everyone have a good rest and peace. Stay human.